who appointed you? Hey, welcome to The Whole Truth, where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation without skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, make sure that you reach down and hit the little subscribe button below and then go over and visit thewholetruthbiblestudy.com where you will find all of the videos in one convenient location. So there's a section for Genesis, a section for Exodus, a section for Leviticus, a section for Numbers, and soon enough there will be a section for Deuteronomy. We're getting into Deuteronomy very soon. We are almost to the end of the book of Numbers. So make sure to go over there and go visit the whole truth Bible study.com. There's ways to support the channel and there's Bible studies over there and that's a growing site. So I hope that you go over and you'll be a part of this journey that I'm on to get as many people as I can into the Bible, into God's word, because I truly do believe that that's where we will find answers. Just like today, this is Numbers chapter 34 and we're going to pick up in verse 16 and it's God telling the Israelite people that they need to appoint, that Moses needs to appoint for the people um, from the leaders. He needs to appoint people to divide out the land. So it's uh, so there's going to be land that's divided to the Israelite people, but who gets to say who gets what land? Well, God said, these are the guys that are going to divide out the land. How does that apply to me? How does that apply to you? I hope that we can find some of that out today in Numbers chapter 34. Do you have it? Numbers 34 and verse 16. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, these are the names of the men who shall divide the land among you as an inheritance. Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun. You shall take one leader of every tribe to divide the land for the inheritance. These are the names of the men from the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh. From the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel and the son of Amiha. From the tribe of Benjamin, Eladad and the son of of Chilslon, a leader from the tribe of the children of Dan, Buki, the son of Jogli, from the sons of Joseph, a leader from the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Hena, Heniel, the son of Aphod, and a leader from the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Camul, the son of Shiftan, a leader from the tribe of the children of Zebulon, Eliphan, the son of Parnak, a leader from the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel, the son of Azan, a leader from the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahihud, the son of Shilamai, Pedahel, the son of Amahud, and these are the ones the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance among the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Okay, now let's just take away Justin's ineloquent reading of these names. Now you might say, you should really spend some time, Justin, learning how to say those names better. And maybe I should, but I think that the practical application is more my aim. That's the thing that I'm looking at. How in the world does this apply to me? I don't just want the history lesson. I want to know what God wants me to do. And in this case, what we see is that as the people went into the promised land that God appointed, he said, Moses, you've got to do this. Appoint certain leaders to divide out the land. And that starts with two people. Did you, did you see who it started with? Eleazar the priest and Joshua the son of Nun. Now that's interesting because Joshua the son of Nun and Eleazar, that is Joshua the, if you will, the political leader. He's going to be the commander of the army, the commander in chief. And Eleazar is the high priest. Hmm. The political and the priestly working together. Did you know that the idea of the separation of church and state, that that is not a law in America, but that's a letter of assurance and recommendation from a president to a particular church group that was really more concerned that the state was going to get involved in the church you see, there's this kind of idea that floats around America. Now, you might be watching this from another country, but here in America, there's this idea that floats around where we say, oh, separation of church and state, separation of church and state. And what happens the moment that somebody says separation of church and state, the church is like sits down and is quiet and doesn't want to say anything because there should, they think there should be a separation of church and state. But friends, the state should stay out of the church, not the other way around. It is not, we don't want to have 
a state church. We don't want to end up with what happened years ago over in England. And we don't want to have this. And, and by the way, other countries as well, where you have like the, the Catholic church that is the state church and everybody has to be that, or then they're susceptible to even the death penalty. That's what was happening years ago um, before um, the Reformation. That's what we saw. And b- before the um, um, Protestant Reformation, that's what we were seeing happening Um but over in England and then even over here in America, we see that people came over here to America because they wanted freedom to worship and the freedom of religion, um, the religion that they would choose. But that is not to say that the state should, that nobody should be in the state should have anything to say from God's word or from the Bible or from a Christian perspective. No, the founders of our country, the founders of America, they knew how important it was to have a country founded on God's word. You see, when God appointed these two people to start, now these two guys need to appoint the rest of the leaders, the Eliezer, the priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, the the political and the priestly working hand in hand. And what do we see? That's what God is going to bless. You see, when our nation was founded and there were laws and principles and rules that were being made based upon God's word, then we were seeing a nation that was flourishing. And not only a nation that flourished, but before it flourished, it was an, it was a nation that overcame all kinds of odds. Now, certainly I'm sure y'all just mark my words. I say this all the time. And if you look down, you'll see them. I'm sure somebody's going to come at me and they're going to tell me in the comments how terrible America is and how wrong I am and how dumb I am and all of that. And that's fine. You can say all those things. If you've noticed, I just really ignore most of those. I, I don't have a lot of time in my life to be sitting here trying to argue with somebody online about something that I'm, I'm certain of. What I'm telling you is that the Lord blesses a nation that seeks after him. And so when our nation sought after God, we saw our nation blessed. And now we see our nation under a strong delusion, don't we? Our nation is in all kinds of messed up shape. And the biggest problem with that, you can, you can say whatever you want to me. I understand the biggest problem with that to be that we have a nation that doesn't seek after God's face. Because if we would seek after him, we would find him. If we would go after the Lord, if we would seek him, if we'd humble ourselves before him, he would heal us. But we refuse to humble ourselves before him. And for whatever reason, you can decide whatever reason you want that to be. I'm not here to get into that. I'm here to show you that in the book of, of Numbers, God said, here's how I want you to divide the land, appoints Eliezer, the priest. Notice it wasn't just the priest. It's Eliezer the priest, and it's Joshua the son of Nun. It's the, it's the commander-in-chief, Joshua, and it's Eliezer. These two together are going to work together to make sure that the land is divided equally and fairly among the people as, as Israel was branching into the promised land. I think there's a lot of application inside of that. But then there's something else. There's all of these other names. I couldn't hardly even read them, and I'm, I'm certain that I'm getting all the pronunciation wrong of all of those names. But that is not the point either. The point is that from each of the tribes, heads of those tribes were appointed to make sure that the land got divided out equally and fairly. So pay attention to this. Not only are they going into the promised land to go where God has told them to go, but God is now giving them instruction of exactly what he wants them to do. You see, he's appointing these people to take the role of dividing out the land, and then it means that he's appointing the land itself. It's kind of a a pyramid effect. It's kind of a trickle down effect Uh, from God to Moses, Moses to Eliezer and Joshua, uh, or um, uh, Joshua the son of Nun, and then on down to Caleb and on down to all these other names that are given here, all of these guys are all going to make sure that the land is divided equally among the people. And then the people are going to receive the land that God has allotted to them. You see, this is the practical application. This is what God has for you. That not only has he appointed where you should be, but he has appointed what you should be doing while you are there. You see, God has appointed it. I know that it can be hard to accept when you look at your life and the things in your life. Sometimes there might be parts of that that you go, wait a second, did God really appoint this? Now, listen, don't flip this around on me and say, oh, Justin said that all the bad stuff in in my life, that God made it happen. No, hold up. Wait, there's bad in the world because there's evil and sin in the world, period. That's why there's bad in the world. But God, knowing that we would be in these situations, has appointed us. Remember what um, Joseph, he was the favorite son of um, 
of Jacob. Do you remember what he did of Israel, the favorite son of Israel? His name was Joseph. He had the coat of many colors. Do you remember that? And do you remember as he was like put into slavery and his brothers threw him in a pit and then they sold him into slavery and then he was in prison for a time, but then he ends up becoming second in command in Israel. And do you remember what he, um, do you remember what he said that what the enemy meant for evil, the Lord meant it for good. The Lord turned it to good. Um, you even see this in the story of Esther, Esther, if you really read that story, like Esther, even though she saved the nation, you do realize that she had to be brought into the king's harem. She was one of many girls who was brought in so that the king could have his pick. He was going to go be with all these different girls so he could have his pick over who he was going to make the new queen because Queen Vashti had been disobedient. So he brought in all these girls and he favored Esther because she was so beautiful. So her beauty actually felt like a curse for a time. She gets brought into um, the harem. She becomes the favorite. The king wants her. But then at the same time, there's this other guy who's trying to destroy all of the Hebrew people, all of the Israelite people. And he's convincing the king to do that. And so do you remember as Esther had to go in and go speak to the king? That's dangerous for Esther to do those things. If you're not familiar with the story, you should go read the book of Esther. You'll see it for yourself. Esther had to go in and go ask the king. That was very dangerous. And her uncle had come to her and, and said, hey, this is what we need you to do. We need you to go stand. They're going to kill all of the Israelite people. And Esther was scared. She's like, I've already been through all of this. And her uncle said to her, you never know that maybe the Lord has appointed you for such a time as this. Have you considered that maybe what you're going through right now, not just where you are, but what it is you're going through, that God has appointed you for such a time as this? Not that God's cruel and mean and wants you suffering, but that God knows that you could be the one that could work through that suffering and that he could bring a miracle through your life into someone else's life, that you might be able to bring others into his kingdom, the work that could possibly be done by where you are right now, because God, maybe just maybe, has appointed you right where you are so that you could do the job that he needs you to do. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll come back tomorrow as we get into Numbers chapter 35. We are so close to the end of the book of Numbers and I hope that you'll come with me. I'll see you then.